Uh, fortunately, the audio hiccups that happened last time, always the, the fun surprise of going live with a new setup and then finding the things you hadn't adequately tested beforehand. But got it all sorted out, so the audio should be uh, should be easy to hear and balanced with uh, with respect to my voice. Oh man, I have got to say I am super glad to be streaming a game that actually invites a little less commentary on the regular because it is about listening to it's about sort of enjoying the narrative experience and the humor um, because man I'm tired I'm very tired and uh, it's nice to feel like the game can do a little bit more of the heavy lifting so oh, for the pregame show this time there is a movie that I found out existed and I was extremely happy to discover this the title of it is Zatoichi Meets Yojimbo, and it is a crossover of a purported crossover of the uh, of, of the Zatoichi blind masseur swordsman character uh, from Chanbara fame with uh, with purportedly Yojimbo from a Kurosawa's movie of the same name, played by uh, played by uh, Toshiro Mifune, and. Uh, so I was really excited by this. I was like, what? Why would they... There's, there's, this, this is this character from these two art films, right? From Yojimbo and Sanjiro. And uh, how the heck did they get this character uh, in, in like, a, like, a, like a superhero crossover or, or that sort of thing? And so, uh, yeah, I was really surprised by that. And uh, I was even more surprised by what I actually found which is that Zatoichi meets Yojimbo is actually kind of a cool parody of Yojimbo itself. Um, uh, kind of, uh, to, to kind of introduce how this even works right at the start, uh, Zatoichi at the beginning of the movie is wandering around the countryside and decides, you know what, he's going to go back home. He's tired of, uh, of all the violence and, and, and random distress out on the road, so he's going to go back home. And he goes back home and he finds that a bitter, uh, bitter Yakuza feud is tearing his hometown apart. Um, this is almost beat for beat exactly the way that Yojimbo opens, except instead of Zatoichi, of course, it is Sanjiro, uh, Mifune's character. <clears throat> and the, the shots and the way that it tells the storytelling visually is, again, just sort of step for step out of the same thing. So this is the, this is Yojimbo. This is as, uh... Evening Mexican Sting, Evening Ark. It's great to see both of you. Uh, looking at uh, how the uh, Zatoichi meets Yojimbo kind of uh, has a good time uh, riffing off of uh, a Kurosawa's movie. Uh, this is the opening to Yojimbo, and uh, of course, you know, all the Yakuza in town are suspicious and paranoid of each other, uh, and uh, they're, uh, you know, watching Yojimbo stroll into town, who is the stranger. And you can see people like looking out from their windows. And as Zatoichi wanders into town, you get the same thing. You've got people sort of uh, hiding behind their, uh, hiding behind the broken screens and their doors, and uh, peering behind broken slats. The town's in disarray. So you very much had the same sort of setup. And a lot of the reviews that I read stated that, um, uh, like that Yojimbo, the character in this crossover, is very similar to the character in Kurosawa's movie. And this is entirely wrong. He, it's not, he's not like it at all. He's the exact opposite. <laughs> uh, I mean, even right down to his circumstances, uh, Yojimbo in Kurosawa's movie is, you know, this sort of wandering cowboy samurai who rolls into town and decides to get involved with this uh, Yakuza feud and settles it at great cost to himself because he's, you know, he's a wandering ronin and that's just what he does. And, um, you know, uh, the Yojimbo character in, in, in this crossover is, uh, is very much attached to one side of this feud. He's part of the situation that the Yojimbo from the other movie would, would have, uh, would have played both sides off of. And so where this really comes to a head for me, and this is, this is, this is wonderful, uh, in Kurosawa's Yojimbo, one of the things that Kurosawa does as a sort of filmic technique in general is the use of wind and particles 
whether it's clouds or dust or, or whatever, uh, he uses this to build up energy, to build a, if there is a, if there's a scene or a moment where there's going to be explosive action, or if it is the culmination of a lot of tension, there's going to be a lot of wind and dust. And so during the final showdown in Yojimbo, uh, of course, you've got uh, Mifune there in the background. You can see the wind and the blowing a lot of the dust around. It's a very Western standoff uh, moment. And there you see his, uh, his antagonists on the other side, uh, of course, flanked by the same. So this is how Kurosawa... Evening, Peacher. It's good to see you. Uh, this is how Kurosawa builds up tension for the final showdown in Yojimbo. And of course, Yojimbo, Sanjuro himself, goes and just, you know, slices everybody up. He's very clever. He's got a special move that he uses to thwart the handgun on the other side and, and all this other stuff. So and he, he shows mercy to the guy whose mom he met. So he's, you know, he's brutal and merciless to wrongdoers, but he still has a heart of gold if, if, if the uh, the people in front of him seem not to know what they've gotten themselves into. Now, contrast this with the same sort of, st the same standoff between Zatoichi and Yojimbo in this crossover, where instead of this very noble buildup, um, you have them facing each other, facing off on each other, and the wind kicks up, it's a very Kurosawa moment, and it gets in his eyes and he whines about it. He's like, I can't see. <laughs> And this face right here pretty much captures his character in a nutshell. So, uh, so and yeah, Zatoichi, of course, being the blind swordsman, is like, yeah, whatever, dude. That's, <laughs> that is your problem and not mine in this sword fight. And, uh, and yeah, so Yojimbo continues to, continues just to act like a total baby. And uh, he's, you know, uses these, these very sort of pale excuses to, uh, to Zatoichi's personal satisfaction at killing him, not to fight him. So it's the complete opposite. And the thing that I really like about it is it really does use the exact moment from the climax of Yojimbo to show exactly how this character is not that guy at all. Um, add one more here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so so yeah this was uh, this was a lot of fun if you uh, if you happen to know yojimbo and, and sort of are going into this movie uh sort of like knowing the source material it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of inside jokes and stuff like that there uh but that is the pregame show and that brings us yeah back around to the title card and uh excuse me just one second i realized that i did not turn off Steam people logging on notifications, which I want to do for uh, for people's privacy. So give me just one second. Same top corner of the screen. Click file with. This is. There's this. Is there a gear icon? There's a gear icon. And that's super useful. Notifications. Bam. Tell me nothing. Flash window when I receive a chat message? Never. I turn off my phone notifications. I turn off these notifications. And I'm done. Oh my god, Zatoichis are so good. The Criterion box set, doesn't it have like all 25 of the movies or something in it? It's, uh, it, it's, it's hefty. <laughs> like, it's, it's, if I'm remembering right, it is so big and so dense that it has like two movies per disc. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're a lot of fun. I love the Zatoichi movies. I'm so glad there are so many of them, too, because they do have, you know, they're formulaic, uh, and they've got every aspect of the formula for a Chanbara movie that you'd want. And, uh, and Zatoichi's a cool character and stuff. And, and there are so many of them! <laughs> One of the things that I kind of lament after having binged so many of them is I kind of feel like I'm running out of, uh, of them to watch. And then I've got the, the Zatoichi series, which is lovely. And uh, it's, it's got Godzilla. Evening Space Hamlet. Uh, it's like Godzilla, right? There's like a million of them. So if you're into the character, you can just kind of just eat it up. Uh, Lone Wolf and Cub are also good. Uh, not, not nearly as many as Zatoichi, which I think gets into like the 20s. Uh, I think Lone Wolf and Cub caps off at 6. Which actually, oh man, I had a killer find. I found uh, a yet unsold copy 
of Lone Wolf and Cub Omnibus number nine. Uh, which retailed at twenty dollars when it was uh, when it was first printed, and this one has never been sold. And uh, the guy who runs the comic shop is I, I love this comic shop. It's it's if you're ever in Seattle, it's called Dream Strands. That's it's great. Um, anyway, uh, went and looking on like what this thing goes for at resale, and it's like something like seventy to two hundred dollars because these things are out of print, and it's a high quality series, and it's just it's heartbreaking to see how inaccessible this stuff is. But yeah, I got this like. This, this 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 comic omnibus that goes for like $120 online for $20, and uh, that'll make you feel like you've had a good day. But, on other things that make you feel like you have a good day, The Secret of Monkey Island. Now, I think I have the audio, um, again, I think I have the audio, excuse me, sorted out here. Uh, if the balance is off for you, let me know, and I can adjust it, but uh, we will no longer have the echo um, that kind of played last stream. Oh, good God. Although, interestingly, Mexican Sting, I found this out. The guy, I, I don't remember his name. I remember Katsu, who plays, um, who plays, uh, who plays Zatoichi. The guy who plays, uh, Ogami Ito in Lone Wolf and Cub is actually his brother. So, yeah, the Katsu, the, the Zatoichi actor started his film career first and then got his younger brother in and uh yeah yeah i think that's that's very cool let's see which i mean you know you can have feelings and maybe rightly so about uh about film stardom uh basically uh cycling the same families back through and sort of limiting the talent pool, and uh, again, like, rightly so, but at the same time, the fan in me is very happy that that's the case. Uh, evening, Dan. It's good to see you. Uh, Dan, I know that uh, you, like uh, Mexican Sting, and I are fans of, of uh, Black and White Shanbara. If you go on to go back and take a look at the uh, pregame show for this one, I looked at uh, how... Uh, Zatoichi meets Yojimbo is a, is a neat crossover, uh, does some good riffing on Kurosawa's film style in the original Yojimbo. So uh, I think as, uh, as, a, as a thoughtful watcher of these movies, I think you'll enjoy that too. But, let's see, how does this... Please tell me how this works for you. Let's get rid of this. There we go. Yeah, the Zatoichi set is is massive. Am I continuing or starting a new game? Well, either way, this is lovely, and we had bad sound balancing last time, so it's worth a listen. Love those clouds. This whole thing just gives me such a warm feeling, like adventure is ready and waiting for you, and it's, it's, you know, you got the watch fire up top and the pirate village down below, and all the lights and all the windows are on, so you feel like there's a lot of life happening. Fifty-eight. This looks right. Dan and Space Hamlet, how are you tonight? Space Hamlet, I'm glad we got both of you because I know it's kind of a late start to the stream. 
All right, so last thing we did was turn on, not turn on, to hand over one of the three trial items. I don't remember the last one that we did, but we are at the start of one of Monkey Island's uh, legendary sequences, which is gathering insults for a sword fight. Let me turn this down in my ears a little bit. I think this should not affect what you guys hear. Yeah, so this is this. What's my? Well, I gotta figure out the controls to this. Um, again. So open use. I don't want key binding commands to any of these things. I want a damn menu. Is what I want. V for verbs. I for inventory. Oh, control and alt do that. Uh, yeah, uh, Mexican Sting, I actually wanted to play it in the original mode. Um, unfortunately, it just streams better with the VO. Um, and so, I, it, so, like, the two things about the remastered mode that, that, that break my heart is, one, uh, well, they were actually both relate to Guybrush's design. Um, I don't like that haircut, man. I just, I, I don't like it. I really don't like it. <laughs> And, uh, I also don't like how he is, uh, how he now is taller and looks more adult. I think that, well, that's the hint. Uh, what's the, how do you switch back and forth? Version hop spot F10, there we go. Like, if you look at this, I mean, the fact that he's got that little bob, uh, at the, at the base of his neck and, uh, he he just he just looks so much more boyish, which I think fits his personality um, more. And maybe we will maybe maybe we'll uh, kind of balance this out a little bit until somebody starts talking. But uh, oh yeah, also the audio is a little cuts my way through. Little a uh, little more quiet. Anyway, yeah, the haircut. The haircut rubs me wrong. Nice night we're having, isn't it? Oh, I sure hopes you had some more important to stop me for. Sorry to bother you. I'll uh, be on my way. Yeah, no, Dominique's boy, uh, VO is uh, is really lovely. Um, fork? Is that, okay, that's right there. So oh, I need to go back to town so I can. Uh, Check my inventory. Okay, so I got a rubber chicken with the pulley in the middle. I know how to get across. I've got the breath mints. I've already used that. I've got the vase. A priceless Ming. A priceless Ming. I bet this will come in handy. Staple remover. I found the treasure of Melee Island, and all I got was this stupid T-shirt. Breathmaster for the pirate who cares about first impressions. Digmaster, the only shovel for serious treasure hunting enthusiasts. I'm very glad to hear that Dominique is back. On, uh, on on Guy versus VO for the the upcoming Monkey Island it makes me very happy. I got two hundred four pieces of eight, and I got this sword. Slashmaster, when you want a sword as sharp as your wit. And I think that the next thing I oh yeah actually the hint literally told me that. Uh... <laughs> it's even got an arrow to point you in that direction. That's great. I love it. Anyway, my preference is for, uh, for, for boyish guy brush and less lanky guy brush. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think if you keep hitting H, uh, I, I actually forgot that H gives you a hint in this version. Uh, it, it goes from sort of opaque to very direct uh, after enough times, which is, you know, good because for, for adventure game players, sometimes you get stuck and you still want to figure enough of it out. Oh, there's the red herring. Alright, let's, uh... 
those. That door. There's the hunk of meat. I think that bird will peck my hand off. Can I talk to bird? I cannot talk to bird. Uh, okay, so... A priceless Ming. Maybe it's heartless, but... That doesn't seem to work. No, that's not it. Uh, is there a way that I can get it from a distance? Can I spear it? Master, when you want a sword, as sharp as your sword. That doesn't seem to work. No, I want to use sword. That doesn't seem to work. Just try to scare up the seagull. Maybe there's something else I need. Oh. I'm actually really curious how many steps I can get by hitting H before it just outright tells me. no idea how I would have known to do that. Alright, so I have a red herring. Very good. <laughs> I kind of feel like maybe if the... Uh, actually, I'm, I'm actually really curious to know what... Um, <laughs> what the original has visually there. I'm, I'm curious to know uh, if there's a, a visual hint in the original. <laughs> it is. Love that somebody got up on a ladder and drew a skull over the over the kitchen door. Really appreciate that they committed. What does this look like in the original? Oh. Well, I guess I'll never know. I mean, I could probably very easily find out by reloading a save, but who's gonna do that? Not this guy. Ha! I never noticed that it has a face. I guess an upside down smile? Yeah, if you could turn your head upside down, it's a face with a big nose and a mustache and a smile and a chin. Um, so, and this one's got two eyes, and a nose and a mustache, and another eye, and a chin. These ships are, frankly, horrifying. I also really like how just, uh, like, yeah, so, like, when you go to the map view, even, like, when you, when you, uh, view Monkey Island from the start screen, you see exactly how long of a path this is from down here all the way up there, and uh, Sky... Skybrush. Uh, I guess that's the Monkey Island Star Wars crossover, isn't it? Uh, Guybrush uh, is uh, just trucking it both times. Or both ways. Up and down. Alright. Now, none shall pass. None oh. shall pass. Red herring. Pass. You just 
just summon his club back? Oh, he's gone. I guess that's that's what he was waiting for. Now we can finally let it all go. Yes, Stan. Welcome to Stan's previously owned vessels. I'm off searching the globe right now for the finest in previously owned marine transportation. Have a look around. I'll be right back. I'm curious. Is um. I don't, I don't know if I'm in touch enough to, to know this. Uh, is the used car salesman still a kind of the butt of jokes? Is that, is that a current thing that, that people have a stereotype about? Spiffy. Why don't say anything special about it? There's something very charming about the uh, uh, Casio keyboard I got for my birthday uh, synth sound of the original soundtrack. Well, I mean, that's the thing is like Stan's whole thing is it's the used car salesman joke, right? Uh, that uh, that he's going to try to slide one by you. Um, and, uh, oh, weird, I can see my mouse. Uh, let's see if I can get that. There we go. Welcome to Stan's well, I mean, the thing is, like, I haven't heard anybody say that lately, and I'm, as, as time goes on, I find that things that I actually considered, like, normal, regular, sort of, cliché jokes are, are, are no longer sort of assumed knowledge, because, you know, young people, etc. People have changed. Oh, can I use my money in this? My money. The croc machine. Huh. Nothing. What? Well, I'm not stupid enough to do that twice. Well, I am. That doesn't seem to work. Mm. You're right. They uh, made it a little, little more Coca-Cola. Didn't they? Oh, the art on the original is just so beautiful. Path, look at path. Grog. Diet Grog. Cherry Grog. Grog Classic. Caffeine Free Grog. And Root Beer. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that at all? <laughs> dull, dull, dull. <laughs> it's sinking as is. That's the one that I take to Monkey Island. <laughs> like a yacht. I'm surprised this one is still afloat. I'm curious. So, in terms of pronunciation, do you say yacht or yacht? Just, just like as a 
What? Yacht? Like, okay, for the longest time I said yacht, and, uh, and then I was like, oh, uh, because the thing is, like, initially I thought it was regional, but no, actually everybody I knew pronounced it yacht, I just, I heard in there, and just, and then just started mentally putting, uh, putting the in there, uh, whenever I would say it, and, uh, nobody corrected me, and, and then for a while I thought it was, you know, like, I know some people will say liqueur, and and I say liquor, and uh, liqueur is. Uh, I I don't know if they actually refer to different class categories of things, or if they are just different pronunciations of the same word referring to the same thing. But uh, but I thought it maybe it was like a, a liquor liqueur uh, difference. Uh, but no, it's actually just wrong. Captain Smirk's big body pirate gym, prices, sword training. 30 pieces of weight. Cannon firing, 160 pieces of weight. Balls extra. Grappling hook, 130 pieces of weight. Hook extra. Hook. <laughs> this is just a rope. Champagne. Well, I think I'll knock. It'd only be polite. Oh, yeah, you would know. What do you want, you wimpy little spineless maggot? Yes. Could you train me to be better than the Swordmaster? Better than the Swordmaster? You? <laughs> Hard work and sweat and blood. I remember fighting side by side with Carla at Port Royal. The local constabulary had us cornered. It looked like we were done for, but then she said, but I digress. You just don't have what it takes. Yes, it's... There's an interesting jump from... The fact that the mouths didn't need to move in the original because it was just text and, and, and not VO. Uh, and when you're sort of like watching them talk in this view, you can, you don't, don't have, you're not looking for lip flaps or anything. You can just sort of assign the voice to the character and that makes sense. But then it's sort of jarring when it jumps to the static portrait and you hear them talk, but you don't see their mouths animate. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Uh, I hear that there might be a, um, there might be a mod to do that, and I do so have what it takes. I'll look into that. You do not. I do so. You do not. I do so. Oh, I like your spirit. I'll do what I can. <laughs> of course, it'll cost you. What do you got? <laughs> Just petulantly stamping your foot. You got the goods, kid. <laughs> well, I've got 30 pieces of eight. Say no more, say no more. Let's see your sword. Okay, check it out. Yes, this is a nice one. Let's get to it. Okay, you maggot. Why don't you whip that sword out and let's see what you can do with it. Boy, you fight like a dairy farmer. I usually don't waste my time. How appropriate with you fight like, like a cow. But seeing as this LeChuck thing has put a cramp on business, I got no choice. I need the money. Yes, I can see this is gonna take some special measures. Just want you to know, I don't do this with everyone. It's only because I feel that special. Student mentor pieces of eight bonding <laughs> that I'm going to these lengths. I'm gonna put you up against the machine. The machine? This gonna hurt. Yikes! <laughs> Come at a monkey. Me. Don't be afraid, you won't hurt me. <laughs> Beat first, then lunge! Advance, thrust, recover, parry, repose. Distance, distance. No. Beat first, then lunge. 
Advance, thrust, recover, parry, repose. Hours later. You're starting to get the hang of it. More hours later. Not bad. You've got good form. Now I'm gonna let you in on the true secret of sword fighting. Sword fighting is kind of like making love. It's not always what you do, but what you say. Any fool pirate can swing a sharp piece of metal around and hope to cut something. But the pros, they know just when to cut their opponent with an insult. One that catches them off guard. You see, kid, your wit's got to be twice as sharp as your sword. Let's try a couple of insults out, shall we? Okay, imagine this. We're fighting up a storm. Just like Carla and I were doing at Port Royal. There's a sudden break in the fighting, and I say to you, you fight like a dairy farmer. You respond with? I'm really curious to know what this machine looks like in the original. I don't rem... Oh, it's a bucket on the head. Actually, didn't parse that out. Um, interesting. Is that a spring? Looks like a... I'm looking at the thing that's... On, on top of the axe. Well, anyway. I guess it's not that important. Uh... <laughs> you must be thinking of someone else. I am not a farmer. I can see we've got a lot of work to do here. You should have responded with something like, How appropriate. You fight like a cow. You see, it's razor-sharp wit like that that wins fights. Let's try another. Imagine this. You're trapped up against a wall... My sword just slashed two cuts into your face. I say, soon you'll be wearing my sword like a shish kebab. You respond with? <laughs> How appropriate. You fight like a cow. No, no, no. <laughs> that was the response from the last insult. Doesn't even make sense when used here. Ah. Oh. A correct response to, soon you'll be wearing my sword like a shish kebab, would have been something like, first, you better stop waving it around like a feather duster. See? Razor sharp. Now, I suggest you go out there and learn some insults. I can't help but feel like I've been ripped off. I'm sure you're feeling something similar. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. My noble adversaries. Pardon me. <laughs> ugly pirate. No, wanted to fight the ugly pirate. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Prepare to die. You fight like a dairy farmer. How appropriate. You fight like a cow. You have the manners of a beggar. of a beggar. Those aren't it. Oh, more options. Oh. What? No. I am rubber, you are glue. I'm not gonna take your insolence sitting down. Huh. What if I learn the options? 
I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I give up. You win. Huh. Maybe the stinking pirate has something to teach me. I wish to fight the stinking pirate, please. Oh! Maybe I need to lead with an insult and then see how they respond. Hey, this better be important. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Prepare to die. Oh, okay. So I learn the prompts, and then I hear how they respond, and then I know that too. Okay. I'm not gonna take your insolence sitting down. Your hemorrhoids are flaring up again, eh? Soon you'll be wearing my sword like a shish kebab. I don't know where I learned this, but I think these insults were written by Orson Scott Card? Uh, wait, what did he say? Uh, shish kebab, yeah. you'd better stop waiting it like a feather duster. You have the manners of a beggar. I wanted to make sure you'd feel comfortable with me. Have you stopped wearing diapers yet? Oh, I see. Interesting. I'm actually... Did they get into how that relationship opened up for this project? Um, I mean, I know Card is involved with video game writing in, in, in different, uh, at different times. Actually, I think he wrote... Was it Shadow Complex? That Metroidvania that was released that had uh, Nolan North as a sort of, like, libertarian action hero? <laughs> um, uh, could you repeat that? I didn't quite get it. I said, have you stopped wearing diapers yet? <laughs> I wonder how irritated he uh, gets. Could you repeat that? I didn't quite get it. I said. Oh, doesn't sound like it have escalates. You stopped wearing diapers yet? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Look behind you, a three-headed monkey. All right, dirty rotten pirate, give me the diapers oh, answer. This better be important. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Prepare to die. Have you stopped wearing diapers yet? Why did you want to borrow one? There are no words for how disgusting you are. Why did you want to borrow one? <laughs> I think the daftness of just responding I'm with immediately what he just what he just immediately heard. Down. Your hemorrhoids are flaring up again, huh? Soon you'll be wearing my sword like a shish kebab. First, you better stop waving it like a feather duster. Yikes! Nice move. Yeah, I know you are, but what am I? Is uh, that's the that's the insult sword fighting meta right there. I like how there's like just this sort of like limited number of known call and response insults that everybody just sort of. Uh, rock, paper, scissors that are way through a sword fight with here. Alright, so... What, uh... Is this the one? 
There are no words for how disgusting you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, -ho. no, wait. Have you stopped wearing diapers yet? Oh, I am rubber. You are glue. I'm not going to take your insolence sitting down. Oh, I am rubber. You are glue. This guy's basically defenseless. I give up. You win. Hey, <clears throat> this better be important. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Prepare to die. Now, this also leans into the whole, like, uh, you know, the end of Monkey Island 2 thing where it's kind of revealed that Guybrush is uh, like a kid at a Pirates of the Caribbean amusement park that these sorts of like playground insults are uh, where you get your cred from. There are no words for how disgusting you are. Yes, there are. You just never learned them. I'm not going to take your insolence sitting down. Oh, it's the hemorrhoids, yeah. Your hemorrhoids are flaring up again, huh? Oh, let's see. I'm not going to take your yeah, insulin sitting down. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Oh, wow, this guy... Not, uh, not learning on his feet, is he? Have you stopped wearing diapers yet? Why? Did you want to borrow one? Have you stopped wearing diapers yet? Oh, wow. This is, uh... Why? Did you want to borrow one? I give up. You win. That might, might have been one of the daftest, uh... Daftest insult sword fights. See if I've learned enough insults. There's no answer. Oh, I get it. Very good. I'm assuming that's the answer to have you stopped wearing diapers yet. Very good. I too can get playground insults. <laughs> uh, maybe I need to learn more. Aha. Move out of the way or I cut my way through. Nope. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Prepare to die. You have the manners of a beggar. I wanted to make sure you'd feel comfortable with me. Soon you'll be wearing my sword like a shish kebab. First, you'd better stop waiting it like a feather duster. Uh, yeah, let's go for a classic. You fight like a dairy farmer. How appropriate. You fight like a cow. I'm not gonna take your insolence sitting down. That's hemorrhoids. Your hemorrhoids are flaring up again, huh? <laughs> there are no words for how disgusting you are. I'm shaken. I'm shaken. Wow, you're good enough to fight the sword, master. Ah, thank you, game. So, 
Now I know I'm good enough to fight the Swordmaster. No, he's not the Swordmaster, but I think I need him to show me where the Swordmaster no is. Answer. Can I uh, just open the door? There's no answer. No, I'm too polite. Okay. Uh. Captain Smirks. Oh wait, there's that training. guy who. Prices. Sword training. Thirty pieces of weight. Oh, there's uh the Cannon the shopkeeper. Fire. 160 right. pieces of weight. Balls extra. Grappling hook. 130 pieces of weight. Hook extra. I remember I had this soundtrack on CD when I was in, uh, when I went to grad school and I was driving from South Carolina to Mississippi, and I listened to this for a very good portion of the way because it feels like, you know, Guybrush has got that, got that, uh, I'm young and I'm going on a next stage of my life kind of energy and, uh, going on that adventure. And so it felt right. So I got a, this gives me good nostalgic emotional feelings. All right, so the shop is not there. That's the voodoo shop. Can't go in there. Is it here? It is. I've got my eye on you, boy. Steal anything and I break your legs. What do you want? I'm looking for the sword master of Melee Island. Look, I told you she doesn't want to see you. Maybe if you asked her again? Hmm. I guess I could hike all the way over there. Can I tell again? him? Be right back. And don't touch anything! Yes, I can! I think this is new music. Is this, uh, tailing an old salty sea dog music? Oh, no, 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 no. Gotta keep a, gotta keep a smart distance. Yes, I was thinking of MGS2 for that. I've got to say, I feel fairly clever for figuring out the tailing thing. I wonder how much better Act 3 in Metal Gear Solid 4 would have felt with the, uh, if there were a nice jazzy percussion. Guybrush is hiding behind a tree and it's just to me like that guy could very easily have seen him. I better just stay back here and eavesdrop. Hello again, Carla. I thought I told you to get lost. Actually, I'm here on the business. This kid come into my store, see? Face it, you crusty old lech. You'd make any excuse just to come out here and bother me. Yeah, I guess so. Well, cut it out. I'm sick of it. Take a hike and don't come out here again. Someone might follow you, and then I'd become another Melee Island tourist attraction. Hey, it's your loss, baby. Yeah, right. Now scram. 
Oh wow, he's got another way back. All right, Swordmaster, let's go. How dare you approach the Swordmaster without permission, which I surely didn't give you. Hi, I'm selling these fine leather jackets. Do you have one in size three? Of course you don't, because you're not really a jacket salesman. Let's be honest. You're here to prove yourself to the pirate leaders in hopes of one day being as immoral as they are. Yep, nailed it right on the head. Gee, you're smart. I can tell by the sarcastic expression on your face that you've been fully trained by Captain Smirk. Let's get this over with. I will milk every drop of blood from your body. Okay. <clears throat> so... All of my answers... So she's going to give me different prompts. And I need to find the right answer out of the ones that I have. Um, going to milk every drop of blood out of your body. That's a cow joke. How appropriate. You fight like a cow. Yes. My wisest enemies run away at the first sight of me. Uh, hemorrhoids? Why is this enemies run away? I'm gonna make sure you feel comfortable with me. I don't, that doesn't quite match. No, no, no. Uh, so, it's a tie right now between feel comfortable with me and hemorrhoids. Well, the guy said I was good enough to fight the Swordmaster. Your hemorrhoids are flaring up again, eh? Okay, no, that's not it. I don't have the confidence behind that answer. You are a pain in the backside, sir. Backside and Your hemorrhoids? hemorrhoids are flaring up again, huh? No, that's a, that's a, that's a hemorrhoid quick with confidence. Every word you say to me is stupid. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure you'd feel comfortable with me. My last fight ended with my hands covered with blood. Hmm. No, I don't think I have the answer to this one yet. Blood. Yeah, I don't think so either. First, you'd better stop waving it like a feather duster. Oh, that's cool. I like how they gave um, Guybrush... My sword is famous all over the Caribbean. I like how they gave Guybrush uh, two different readings of the jokes, one more and less confident. <laughs> Sword is famous all over the Caribbean. Well, Feather Duster is a... S wait, it is refers First, to the sword. you'd better stop waving it like a Feather Duster? No, try it twice in a row. That didn't quite work out, huh? I hope you have a boat ready for a quick escape. Boat ready for a quick escape. No, I don't think I have this one either. Hmm. Oh, I get it. Yep. Why? Did you want to borrow one? There are no clever moves that can help you now. <laughs> yes, there are. You just never learned them. I give up. You win. Oh, I was really curious about the ones I didn't know. I hope you're happy. You can go back and brag to all your friends about how you beat the Swordmaster. You'll need proof. Here. This should convince them. Wait, what did I, what did I just get? 
<laughs> it says, I beat the Swordmaster. Might not have leather jackets, but I got some fine cotton t-shirts. Evening, Ivy. It's good to meet you. <gasps> goes... What was that? How appropriate you so watch confused. like a cow? Hey! Huh? What are you doing just standing around? The governor's been kidnapped! What? By whom? LeChuck's got her on that ship that just sailed off. <laughs> I'm afraid we've seen the last of her. So where were you this whole time? Sleeping? Hey, I'm a lookout, not a bodyguard. Man's beard is impressive. How impressive was the beard in the original? Not impressive at all! Matter of fact, I think there was a beard to eyeglasses ratio that was... They just kind of pulled that slider from eyeglasses over to beard when they remastered it. Where did they go? LeChuck's taken the governor back to his hideout on Monkey Island. I'm afraid that no pirate on this island is brave enough to follow him there. But hey, good luck. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, they left this note. You can have it, but I don't think you'll like what it says. Attention, pirates of melee. Your governor is alive and well and by my side as she was always meant to be. If you try to find us, you will only meet with horrifying disaster. Yours truly, Captain LeChuck. That's interesting that they, uh... <clears throat> excuse me, the first game, you know, it's the whole sort of, like, rescue the princess thing. Uh, as I recall from the second game, she's just much more, just very much more competent than Guybrush, and that's pretty well established. <laughs> If it is out of sync, I can see if there's anything I can do on my end. Let me, uh, see. Oh, poor guy. What's wrong, old sot? The governor is gone. LeChuck and his spectral crew came and got her. <laughs> they put her in the ghost ship and spirited her away. She was so good to me. Always conveniently losing those health board reports. <laughs> For a small consideration, of course. What'll become of my business? Oh, woe is me. <laughs> What can I do to save her? <laughs> you must get a ship and go after her. The ghost pirate's lair is on Monkey Island. Everybody knows that. Don't ask me how. All you need to do is find a way there. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, I checked uh, 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 OBS, this... Uh, Streamlabs thing. I think it's got a thing where it tells me when like frames drop significantly, and it wasn't wasn't giving me that heads up. Why should I do that? Why for love, my boy? Don't deny it. It's written all over your face. Love. <laughs> oh wow. That's, uh... I got a makeover in the in the remake for sure. Where can I get a ship? Why, it's Smiling Stan's used shipyard. Same as everybody else. Tell him I sent you. 
We're old friends. Will you join me? Uh, alas, I cannot go to see an old war injury. I'm sure you understand. Get me a drink. Get your own drink. <laughs> right. I'm off. Very good. Good luck. Be sure to wear your mittens and your galoshes. And don't forget to write. Bye now. <laughs> Looks like a fine pewter tankard. Can I take it? I can. Can I take this one? I have taken both mugs. Are they the same object? They are the same object. I seem to remember Grog being corrosive. <laughs> Time to be a video game character and lift everything I see. All right, Stan. Let's do business. Any sign of the governor? None. As I said, I fear we've seen the last of her. Mighty noble for him to keep up his post regardless. Oh man, when I was a kid, I thought the word Emporium was so weighty, so important sounding. Howdy! I'm Stan of Stan's previously owned vessels, and I'd stand on my head to make you a deal. Oh, I love this jacket effect on him. It's interesting. They have the they have the visual gag here in the original, but I think it came through better later when the graphics got uh, got a little sharper. All these ships. I've got something for everyone. Come take a look around. So tell me, what are you interested in looking at today? Yeah. Something not too expensive, but built to last. Affordable quality. Hey, that's my motto. I've got just the boat for you. Walk this way. Now I can see you're a no frills kind of guy, but I can also tell that quality means a lot to you. I mean, just look at the way you dress. Rugged, like this baby. She comes from a land far to the north, where the sea is as unforgiving as the men are tough, and hey, you wouldn't happen to be from there, would you? You just seem to have a sort of Nordic quality about you. Anyway, we're talking about a real value here. How much would you like to spend? Oh man, I don't, I never really appreciated in the original how, uh, when I played this through the first time, that he's sort of like, like, appealing to Guybrush's machismo uh, to, to get him to buy the boat. Uh, so, is the is the bunch of donuts, is that a negative thing? Because that seems like a net gain if, um, you know, if, uh, I mean, just the price donuts, I mean, granted it's somebody else's loss that they paid for the donuts and are expecting them, but, um, it's New York, you can't help, you can't, probably can't uh, find whoever that is, so you're basically clean. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, uh, this was um, right after uh, we moved into this new place. 
uh, just out of nowhere, uh, we got a pizza delivery, and it was exactly what we always order, and uh, was like sending sort of like knowing thank you messages to parents and anybody else who, uh, would, uh, you know, who I thought might have, uh, you know, done the nice uh, surprise gift sort of thing. And uh, everybody kept, uh, at least three people who I thought did it was, uh, were, they were all bewildered. Uh, like, like, no, I didn't do it. And I was like, ah, somebody's being coy. But no, uh, we got a text message. I got a text message that night from the person who lived here previously uh, asking if we had received the pizza order by any chance, at which point we had eaten easily half of it. And it turns out, by sheer coincidence, that the person who lived here before happened to order exactly the same thing from the exactly the same place that we always order. And uh, it was uh, maybe the most unfortunate coincidence for them that they were waiting an hour after their pizza got here. <laughs> and it was entirely consumed. Uh, fortunately, uh, the, uh, the, the pizza place... Uh, did good by him and sent him out a new one, but yeah, yeah, what are the odds? I mean, that's the thing of, like, pizza, right? Nobody orders the right thing for anybody else. I feel pepperoni is a pretty safe bet in any instance, uh, but this was, uh, it was like pepperoni on one half and mushrooms and black olives on the other because I can't stand that, uh, and, uh, yeah, it was just, like, just a little too on the nose. So, thank you, fate. The rubber chicken chicken have collateral value. All I have is this rubber chicken. Is it one of those rubber chickens with a pulley in the middle? I already got one of those. <laughs> you other means of finance, would you? I did not see that joke coming. Yeah, I, I don't like I don't I don't like the texture of mushrooms or olives, and that just it's it's not it just doesn't click for me. 371 pieces of eight. I'm glad this ship doesn't have ears, my friend. Because if she did, she'd slap your face. I doubt you're carrying enough cash on you for this transaction. You wouldn't happen to have any other means of finance, mm. would you? Actually, I was hoping to get one on credit. Sorry, kid. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. That's just old Stan's philosophy. If you've got a job, the storekeeper in town might extend you some credit. Then we'd have something okay. to talk about. Unless, of course, you've already got some other means of financing. Money is no object. Well, it is with me. How much <laughs> you got? Space Hamlet, what is the appeal of mushroom and olive? I'm... I'm always very interested to know why people who like foods that I have a very strong no thank you reaction to like them. On second thought, this may not be the ship for me. Okay, but I got five other guys coming back to look at this baby today. Don't count on it being here if you change your mind. So, what else can I show you? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Have that much to spend. Have no fear. Every ship I sell is a bargain. But if you're looking for a real steal, same question I'm applies, Mexican Sting. I don't for you. understand. Walk this way. Wait, what's what's your mommy? Is that is that the the, the bean? No, that's edamame. What's your mommy? I don't know what that is. Monkey Island, and come back with anyone aboard left alive. Or should I say, anything? You see, the previous owners of this ship were two Evening, Utah. adventurous pirates. They set off, like many before, to find the legendary secret of Monkey Island. And like many before, they disappear forever. <laughs> Their fate? A mystery. Almost as mysterious as how this ship returned to Melee Island without a single human aboard. Some claim it was sailed back by a crew of chimps. Chimps? Am I getting a discount because this ship is cursed? Oh, shut up. It makes a good story. Anyway, this baby's mine now. That is, until someone makes me an offer. Just how much were you looking to spend today? Okay, cool. Now that we're at a stopping point. Uh, Utah, I'm actually going... Uh, good evening. It's good to meet you. 
Um, I'm uh, I'm going for few hints and the the um, fortunately does it do it now? Yeah. Uh, if you hit H on the remastered version, it gives you one to pop up. So if you're stuck, it uh, it sort of like starts out from a really broad view and then sort of narrows in from like kind of like what your uh, what your goal is and then where you might find it and then it just literally tells you what to do to progress the game. So, um, but thank you for asking. I appreciate that uh, rather than just like throwing them out. Um, so umami, savory, huh? Yeah, man, I just don't get it. No, wait. No more than 173 pieces of eight. Yet Guybrush says... Oh, I bet... That's weird. It's like they got the uh, the numbers backward. not that reasonable. I don't think you've got the cash for this transaction either. You do have some other means of payment. Don't you? Yes, Utah. Stan is... Uh, I'm actually really curious what kind of deal Stan cut for that jacket whose, whose texture remains fixed on the warp and weave of the universe regardless of how he moves his arms. No way, that's so cool. chicken is it one of those rubber chickens with a pulley in the middle I already got one of those you wouldn't have to have any other means of finance would you okay looks like I'm gonna have to go to the shopkeeper and uh, get thought, the this may not be the ship for me get the credit of it isn't. you were looking for a much bigger boat I can tell so what else can I show you maybe I can get those uh Blue Get those nice. pirates, circus, and the rat. It's mine, and it's not for sale. To join me. What else can I show you? Actually, I'd like to go think about it some more. Sure, sure, think it over. You know, Mexicans think that's. Um, I'm remembering. Bye now. I think I'm remembering the hint book to Hitchhiker's Guide to the I've Galaxy. No, Starship out. Titanic. And here's something else to remember me by. A compass? An extra strong magnetic compass. With your picture on it. That's right. It always points directly back here. <laughs> so if you're looking for a good deal, you know where to go. I'll be right here when you come back. But I can't guarantee that any of these ships will. That is good. They're moving fast today. Yes, sirree. Can't hardly keep anything in stock. He'll be back. So yeah, Starship Titanic has a hint book that I bought off eBay about a year ago, and it's got one of these red tinted plastic magnifying glasses that uh, there's there's text on the page and it's got some sort of hash marking over it. And when you put that little red magnifying or, or red plastic lens over it, then you can read the text that's underneath and. Uh, is that kind of like what it was, Mexican Sting? And uh, and yes, Utah. Stan does seem like the kind of guy who would try to argue down the price at Goodwill of all places. <laughs> oh, Starship Titanic? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I just mean, by magnifying glass, I mean just like the general shape of the object, not necessarily the magnification function. Um, yeah, that, uh, Douglas Adams had a pretty neat, uh, had a, had a pretty neat grasp on what made interactive fiction <clears throat> compelling, though based off of, um, the Hitchhiker's Guide text game, excuse me, and, um, uh, based off the Hitchhiker's Guide text game and uh, Starship Titanic, I feel like 
feel like there was a little further he could have gone to make those accessible. Did you know the governor's been kidnapped? Err... Uh, well, yes, we knew about that. <laughs> Can I interest you in a dream vacation to Monkey Island? Because of this sudden change in local government, I'm prepared to offer you a once-in-a-lifetime price on a cruise to that scenic wonderland, Monkey Island. Yes, Mexican Sing, that's exactly thing it. This offer is the price. Absolutely free. All you have to do is help me crew the ship, and Island Paradise can be yours. Free. And we might just rescue the governor while we're at it. Uh, well... The governor could probably take care of herself. And we are sort of busy here. Yeah. And we've got the circus to think of. We've got to find the elephant. Find the rat. Yeah. And get rid of these minutes. I'm sorry. We simply can't go at this time. That's interesting. I would not have thought that the... De I mean, even now, I don't think I would have thought of the decoder ring as copy protection either. But that makes perfect sense. Now that you, now that you, you spell it out for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I... Uh, I guess I always thought that the red plastic over the obscured thing was just magic, right? Because that's... Red's a magic color. It reveals all. The premise behind the color. Revelation. Right? Hey! Where'd you go? I hike halfway across the island to try and get you a reservation with the Swordmaster, who, by the way, says you can go jump in the lake. And when I come back, whew, you're gone. See if I ever do you a favor again. What do you want? Yes. I'm interested in procuring a note of credit. You are, I, uh, you got a job. To be honest, sir, I am not employed. Yes, of course I do. All right. I'll get one of my notes and we'll figure it out. <laughs> That's it. It just takes you at your word. Let's see here. What did you say your occupation was? I don't know, Utah. What is the best part of being a pirate? Uh, I'm an acrobat with a traveling circus. Queen ships. That's. I can say that's true. I'm an acrobat with a I have been circus. paid for that work. Yeah, one of them fettuccine brothers. Where's your silly accent? And where are you silly slippers? Come back when you got a job in a credible business. Okay. So now... Is it counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, half-clockwise? I like that he's uh, that he's apparently put like a noise making device on the thing so that when it opens it What else do you want? Um Oh man. Uh So uh for 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 a, for a for a Christmas present my kid got um uh got a a Frosty the Snowman children's book and it has a cutout in the corner through the board book pages and there is a small uh, push button, you know, kind of like greeting card quality um, uh, music uh, chime that will play. So you press it and you hear the first, uh, you know, and that's kind of the novelty of it, and it plays through the song. And uh, and 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 he's, it's been it's been pressed so many times at this point that if you hit it once, it'll it sounds like 
I mean, if you just envision a clock with springs popping out of it and uh, trying to play the, 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 you know, the, the chime on the hour, but gradually just losing tune, that's basically a good, uh, a good notion of what it sounds like. But after that first time, you just hit it and it's like... It just, it's clearly struggling and not succeeding. And this works particularly well for this, as I'm, as it, uh, for, for the format, because one of the lyrics in Frosty, Frosty is a hedonist, of course, um, is it, uh, Frosty the snowman knew the sun was hot that day, so he said, let's run and have some fun, because soon I'll melt away. And Frosty's like, I got one day of life. I'm going to live it. And presumably, Frosty does, you know, I mean, he's aware of his mortality right out of the gate. And one can only assume that it comes to pass. So the fact that the song itself in the very board book has decayed to the point of unintelligibility, I feel works very well for, um, for this particular story. And uh, it's art in its way. Grog is absolutely a benefit, no, especially if you are the only pirate left on the island and, uh, and, and the barrel is all yours, such as it is. I'm looking for the Swordmaster of Melee Island. Look, I told you she doesn't want to see you. Maybe if you asked her again? Hmm, I guess I could hike all the way over there again. Be right back. Oh! Don't touch anything! Okay. Now I get this joke. I don't think I got this before, but yeah, so, like, he just likes pestering the Swordmaster, so he's acting like it's a big deal for him to go all the way over there. other verbs push so Mexican sting that gag for trying to open the safe is that um, how do you trigger that I'm curious Okay, then, okay, wait, so pull. and I'm going to left-click the mouse, and now I'm going to right-click. Hmm. There's nothing in here but this note. A note of credit? So what does this say? I, the good and honorable storekeeper, do hereby take liability for the debts of the bearer of this note for any amount up to 5,000 <coughs> pieces of eight. Uh... Uh, kind of arc so with the way that the uh, so each object has a verb that I think they think you are more likely to want to use so if I go up to say the door if you see there's open in the lower right hand corner if I hit the right mouse button then it will automatically do that verb so I don't have to go to you know the menu pick the one out and then go do it actually I think the original does this too let's see does it do it yeah, so I right-click on the door, and he automatically goes and does that. Um, for the handle on the safe, 
it will automatically right click will automatically do either push or pull whichever the last one you entered is so if you want to switch push to pull you have to turn on that verb then left click on it and then you can right click on it so that it can continue on and the thing i kept messing up on was i would change my verb i would right click thinking that it was going to activate it and in fact it didn't so it just kept resetting is uh it's kind of oh can i want to no here i told you there was only one in existence now get lost oh well that's that. I can never unsee. Uh, so like, yeah, so this face that I'm seeing that's upside down uh, with these eyes and there's kind of this nose and then there's this, this sort of grin and there's this chin. If I look at it upside down, it kind of looks like one of the robots that you would see designed uh, for like Futurama like one of the ow that hurt <laughs> one of the uh, one of the sort of like maybe more anonymous robots or that would be like a one-off gag uh, in, in Futurama and uh, and I quite like that what do we is it not even there in the original no I am scandalized. And I actually like both. I like the emptiness and the tranquility of the ocean beyond, and I also like the personality given by the uh, by the by the boats in the dockyard. Yeah. Fortunately, I have both at my fingertips, so I don't have to choose. Howdy. Great to see you again. I knew you'd come back. Everybody does. You know why they come back? Just look at all these ships. I've got something for everyone. Come, take a look around. All right, I'm gonna buy that one so in the back. What else can I show you? Or the best ship you got? Ship you've got. Hey, it's nice to meet a man who appreciates quality. I've got just the boat for you. Walk this way. Now this. This is a ship fit for a king. I mean, we're talking 15 staterooms, a fireplace in every one. We're talking two pools, one indoor, one outdoor. We're talking rotating ball. If that outdoor pool is not also the ocean, I'm going to be very disappointed. We're talking 200 feet of ocean going decadence. And all for one low price. Speaking of price, what kind of price range were you thinking of? I got credit from the storekeeper. Will you take it? I'd love to. I really would. I usually do, but not for the amount this baby's gonna run you. Maybe one of the other ships would be more in your price range. Okay, so it's definitely so that large one I that I can you? see back there. That's that's what I'm uh, going for. So the uh, cheap can one. I see the cheap yes. One again? I knew it. I knew it. Just can't get her out of your mind. Is there a phrase for um, for the kind of discount that you get on something because it's cursed or haunted? Um, I remember reading somewhere that uh, that, uh, that that houses that are supposed to be haunted go for less, um, and I feel like there must be some word for that specific kind of discount. <laughs> monkey paw deal. <laughs> that would actually be very appropriate for this game, uh, specifically. I got credit from the storekeeper. Will you take it? Hey, of course. There we go. Your credit's always good at stands. It doesn't matter if you've had credit problems in the past. 
Divorce? Chronic gambling mishaps? I mean, who am I to judge, right? If the storekeeper trusts you enough to give you a letter of credit, then you must be an honest man with a steady income, right? Uh, right. Let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? I know you want it. You know you want it. And I know that you know that I want to sell it, so... <laughs> Let's talk extras. Let's talk extras. Extras? You want to talk extras? Great! This baby's loaded with extras. For instance, did I tell you about the porthole defoggers? All right. Geez, Stan, that does sound useful. I could use a defogged well porthole. Money too. That's why it's already included in the price. But wait, there's more. Did I tell you about the anti-lock anchor? <laughs> I think I can live without that particular piece of junk. Sure, throw safety to the wind. But wait, there's more. Did I tell you about the rack and pinion rudder? Geez, Stan, that does sound useful. And well worth the money, too. That's why it's already included in the price. But wait, there's more. Did I tell you about the velour sail covers? Velour sail covers. Now we're definitely getting into Futurama territory. Geez, Stan, that These features really go on, don't they? And well worth the money, too. That's why it's already included in the price. But wait, there's more. Did I tell you about the taco meter? If I were to read that line cold, I would have pronounced it tachometer. And well worth the money too. That's why it's already included. I wonder if there's any kind of rule that guys, whether somebody says ometer or, 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 or o meter, thermometer. Chronometer. Wait, that's a clock. No, anyway. Enough about extras already. Okay, where were we? <laughs> yes. Well, yes. No, it's like the most like visible thing that the that the sail is doing, right? I'd like to make you an offer. I haven't been sailing in a very long time, so I could be totally wrong about that, but I remember tacking is um, when the sail is pushed hard to one direction so that you're kind of moving and you sort of zigzag your way through. <clears throat> I'd like to pay 2,000 pieces of eight. Sure, I guess we can start out at the bottom. I got all day. I'm going to be getting a whole new shipment next week, so you got me over a barrel. I've got to sell this baby, even if it means losing my shirt. I'd like to make you an offer. Great. How much? I'm sure this is where it's going to All right, 5000 but that's my final offer. That's a little bit more like it. But not much. I know you can try harder than that. Just tell me, what would it take to get you to sail this ship away today? Uh, well, what do you think? Yeah, let's start here. You could sail this puppy away today. Eight thousand fifty. Eight thousand fifty. Sir. Pieces of eight. How does that sound to you? I'd like to make you an offer. Great. How much? So I gotta get another 3,050. Actually, I'd like you to squirm a little more. Sure. Hey, that's my job, isn't it? You realize, don't you, that they just don't make them like this anymore? Okay. Forget it. I don't need this boat anyway. Now, wait a second. Don't go away mad. I'm sure we can work something out. Well, maybe you're right. Of course I am. 
Now, where were Come on, we? Stan, drop that price. Oh, yeah, buddy. You can tell me the truth. It's the little woman, isn't it? You're afraid of what she'll say when you come home with a new ship. Don't be such a wimp. Stand up to her. She'll respect you for it. And when she sees this, oh yeah, this ship, joke doesn't work today. She'll love you for it. Trust me. I'd like to make you an offer. Great. How much? I mean, granted, he's supposed to be skeezy, so I don't think the game is siding for him. But even still, uh, as, a, as, as a throwaway joke, I don't think you would find that in a game made now. <laughs> Actually, I'd like you to squirm a little more. Sure! Hey, that's my job, isn't it? I don't understand. I thought you were interested in this ship. Forget it. I don't need this boat anyway. Alright, I gotta go find another 3,050. Now, wait a second. Don't go away mad. I'm sure we can work something out. Sorry, Stan. I'm out of here. Sure, sure. Think it over. I don't want you to feel pressured or anything. Bye now. Can I go in his office? Did I already give you my what? <laughs> Here. I better give you another one just in case. Thanks. The cartoony violation of space and, and proportion, that's uh that's good stuff. Alright, so what uh okay, I don't need anything from there. Nothing from there. Is there anything? Can I go to the fortune teller? Ah, Swordmaster Carla. Evening, Ark, or, uh, have a good day, Ark, it's evening here. Uh, thanks for stopping by, it's always great to see you. Have a good day at work. Oh man, I want to go to sleep, listen to this music again. It's soothing. You've already got the t-shirt. What do you want now? The governor's been kidnapped. What? That's ridiculous. Oh, no. This looks bad. Very bad. I'm getting a ship and a crew together to go rescue her. Hmm... I have a feeling I'm going to regret this, but count me in. All right. I'll meet you at the dock. I figured I'd just get a bunch of lowlifes for my crew. I didn't know I'd get the Swordmaster. Recruiting some top-tier NPCs for this quest. Oh, actually, let's just go ahead and do this now. Been a while. Oh wow, we're only at twenty-four percent. I actually don't remember the game being this long. Meanwhile, having just returned from melee, LeChuck and his crew find their old hiding place in the underground rivers of Monkey Island and drop anchor. Captain Sir. What? I just stopped by to congratulate you on your kidnapping mission. Captain? No way. Are you all right? Oh, gross. Never felt better. And how fares our prisoner? Like, I don't know if that was a disguise that he put on or if he possessed that guy and then just, like, ripped through his skin to emerge in his piratey form. No, 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 nothing to worry about, sir. Everything's under control. She escaped a few times, but we've got her locked up in the brig. No one's getting in or out of there. For your sake, I hope not. 
With years of planning almost destroyed by my death, I'm not taking any chances now. You took care of Mr. Threepwood then? Guybrush Threepwood will not be a problem. At this very moment, he's 20 feet underwater. Probably blown Oh, up that's right, because in the form of the his the uh being eaten out by crabs. Fish pecking at his fingers. Kind of makes you wish you were there to watch. Ah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mexican Sting. Does it that. Now, I really appreciate that. Check on the route. Make sure it's locked up tight. Aye, aye, Captain. Borrow one? Do you mean like a revenant? Uh, a, 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 a revenant host? Um. I don't think so. I don't think I need a revenant host. Um. I'm still corporeal, and um, if I want to be a shambling mass of sort of revenge, I think I can just kind of DIY that right now. But thank you for the offer, and I will keep that in mind. Interesting to think that, that Chuck just like possessed that guy and then just just split him in half before our very eyes. Maybe okay. So I need a little more money and I need more crew. Maybe the guy who taught me how to use the sword can join. Oh, there's the guy with the hooks for the hands! Meat hook, yes. Wow, that is, uh... Who is this? It's locked! <gasps> Oh, I wonder if I can... I, I'm kind of remembering something about Grog being acidic. And I know that those other pirates are trying to get a rat for their circus. So it occurs to me, if I can free this rat, and I'm assuming it's the same one, because why would you have two different rats on a single pirate island that's just overpopulation, then I can free this rat and that maybe will free them up to, uh, to join me. Yes, it is dramatic music for an empty church, and you have to imagine that Ethel, the organ player up there in the loft, is just having a great time with nobody to check her creative madness. Keep on trucking, Ethel. May I help you? I was just on my way to the governor's mansion. Are you here for the looting? <laughs> yes, looting sounds like fun now that I'm a pirate and all. And do you have reservations, sir? Why, yes, I do have reservations. And what name would they be under? Hmm, that seems clever. It's probably under S for Shine Top. Nice try. Aw, oh, it's too but clever. We're booked solid for the next five hours. Mm, but I might be able to squeeze you in around the two o'clock hour. Would that be okay? Yes, that would be fine. Super. I'll put you down Super. for one to loot the governor's mansion at 2.30. Oh, that's clicking away from the game. There we go. <clears throat> I love that super. All right, guys. I'll just be running along now. Curious 
maybe I need to use these doors to get through there faster. So I'm creating a plan for solving a problem that I don't even know if it exists. Um, man, isn't that just like a summary of life? Uh, <laughs> depending on the day. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to try and get this grog in a cup, and I'm going to try and take the grog over to the jail, and I'm going to try and free the rat using the acidic grog. This stuff is eating right through the mug. <laughs> Let's go, my dude. <laughs> Come on, Guy Brush. Ah, it's gone. Okay, that's not going to work. Circus? Oh, a circus. I love a circus. Can I take the poster? I can't pick that up. Nope. Certainly cannot. Okay, I think this alley is... This alley's uh, purpose has been exhausted. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so yes, I'm gonna take a look and see if Meat Hook will join my crew. <clears throat> more to say than I thought it did. Which is anything at all. Alright, meat hook. Oh, I get to use my rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle! I see the face of a large, jawed, screaming animal when I look down from Melee Island on the top. And I, I genuinely don't know if I'm projecting that in the same way that, you know, you look at clouds and you see shapes, or if that's intended, because it is just abstract enough that I could be completely wrong about it. Use... There we go. Use this on cable. Seems like somebody somewhere must have made that as a gag item. I wonder if you could 3D print a rubber chicken with a pulley. I mean, it wouldn't be a rubber chicken, obviously, because it's 3D printed, but you know what I'm saying. I told you, I don't have the time to show you any more tattoo tricks. The governor's been kidnapped! What? That's preposterous. Oh, really? Take a look at this note they left. Oh no. This is horrible. What are we going to do? Join my crew. <laughs> we could get a crew together and sail off after them. What an idea. Now, if we only had a captain. Well, what about me? Ha! You! <laughs> That's a good one. Hey, I'm serious. Really? Really? Okay, let's see you prove it. 
Walk this way. There's something in I am still disappointed that there's not like a something horrible. Like a young Frankenstein walk this way joke in here. Just thinking about it. But I don't mean to scare you. I'm sure a big brave guy like yourself will have no problem facing this monster. After all, it's much smaller than the beast that bit off my hands so many years ago. Arr, 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 arr. Let's just hope you're quicker than I was. I don't remember this at all. Oh, I just remembered something. I never did get around to feeding him this <laughs> week. <laughs> Silly me. I'll let you open this last door yourself. Just let me get out of your way. Wait. <laughs> Getting cold feet? No, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to open that little door. And if you're brave enough, touch the beast inside. Oh, is that all? Okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> got Such a loss. All right, here we go. <laughs> Murderous wing devil. Oh my god, I've got a whole new set of verbs for this. I didn't know that. I don't believe it. You are a brave man after all. You faced the beast I've feared all these years. I wonder if they'd all do the same thing. To do what I never could. <sighs> I feel like such a coward. I'm not good enough to be on your crew. I'm not even good enough to swab your de 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 <laughs> Oh, come on, Meat Hook. You're a big, strong, good-looking guy with a talking tattoo. You can swab my decks anytime. <laughs> really? Sure. <laughs> I can still be on your crew. Just pack your stuff and meet me at the dock. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Meat Hook's but redemption arc is, in way, is underway. Hey, maybe I'll get a chance to show you my whole tattoo routine when we're at sea. Wow, this is sounding better and better all the time. Wait, that's Cam Clark? Oh man, I can almost I can kinda hear Liquid Snake in 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 that oh I wanna hear it again. Ahoy there, Captain! What are you doing back here so soon? You didn't think I was chickening out, did you? Uh <laughs> no, of course not. I just wanted to tell you that uh everything's a okay. Hey, <laughs> that's great. So I guess I'll see you at the dock, right? Right. See you there. Oh, that's rich. That's awesome. Uh, Mexican Sting, have you heard Cam Clark's um, music album? I think it was like either late nineties or early aughts, and uh, he's got a he's got a he's got a good singing voice. My rubber chicken. There we go. Yeah, I think it, it's interesting. He and uh, Josh Keaton, two uh, two MGS series vets and uh, iconic voices in that uh, on that cast, uh, both had singing careers at different times. I do too. I remember. Uh, I remember having uh, just a great fan 
gobsmacked reaction when I when I heard Kratos in Tales of Symphonia, and was like, "That's Cam Clark doing an American accent." Got one more person for my crew. Yeah, he is. Josh Keaton is a very cool guy. Oh, that's right. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was Kaneda in the, uh, the first one. The first, uh, I, I'm assuming they've redubbed that since then, just because they kind of do that with all of the, uh, early, uh, anime, uh, the stuff that was... There's no answer. Well known. There's no answer. Oh, where is this guy? Kaneda! Tetsuo! It's like the last, like, 45 minutes of that movie. I mean, I'm sure there's other dialogue, but I don't remember it. No, 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 I don't want to go to Stan's... Is he... Troll on the bridge? Nope, no troll on the bridge. I need one more person for my crew. Can I get a Fettuccine brother? I don't know who Johnny Young Bosch is. Those crazy spaghetti brothers are still in there. Oh, really? Huh. I am uh, going to watch the VOD on this and see if it looks George Lucasy. <laughs> I actually don't. I don't know who Vash the Stampede is, unfortunately. Um, so I got meat hook. Sure. Oh no, wait, no, sure. That's. That, I don't need to go there. Um, and Power Rangers were just a little after my time in terms of being, like, the target audience for it. Trigun. I've heard of that one. Right, I can't... The cook is not gonna join my crew. I don't... I don't think. Maybe so. I'll look it up after uh, after the stream. See if I can. Uh... Oh yeah, let's go to the fortune teller. Is she back? In fact, she is not. Hey, I'm back and I'm ready to know more about the future. Whoa. So you have returned to learn future. Yes, I must go after the governor. I see you with some others willing to help in your cause. I really hate that flashing. It makes me see spots. Quiet. I am like what is the what do the flashbacks vision. pertain to? A a, a, a media must. object or a show, Space Hamlet? Must what? You must go to Monkey Island. Of course I must go to Monkey Island. Once there, you will search for the ghost pirate, LeChuck. He hides deep, <laughs> deep beneath Monkey Island. There is only one thing powerful enough Shadow to destroy Shadow of Destiny LeChuck. is what? probably my favorite you streaming experience of the in, uh, out of the entire the now almost two years that I've been doing this. <laughs> um, oh, it's Root Beer. That's right. More um, but uh, yeah, Shadow of Destiny and just the, I see the progressive endings just getting even more insane. And the fact that the I endings just uh, you. kept reaffirming the dumb ideas that I had about how could this possibly escalate in a dumber direction. And the game just leaned into that and it paid off. It was just magic. Don't worry, I'll watch out for LeChuck. That was like, uh, that was a gaming experience that was 
so close to being revelatory, like old games from like the PS2, uh, you know, playing on the PS2 when it was in its heyday, uh, it gave me those same feelings. So my takeaway from that is, yes, the root beer, and uh, I will be seeking help for the cannibals. Can I use the couch? Can I sit on the couch? Uh, no thanks. I can never fall asleep in strange places. Very good. Oh. Otis the prisoner. I didn't know his name was Otis. <clears throat> And I actually thought that his his part in this uh, his part in this had been played out. <gasps> Where's the rat? Oh, there it is. The governor's been kidnapped. What? Here, look at this note. They kidnapped the governor. That really makes me mad. Oh, I feel like kicking someone! Hmm... I wonder if she left her place unlocked. If I let you out, would you join my crew? Sure! Of course! To my emancipator, I shall be eternally indebted. Until then, I pace. <laughs> it's locked! Look. I appreciate you trying to keep me company and everything, but unless you're a lawyer, or do you know some way to magically do okay. this lock, I really don't see so the grog continuing this conversation. Instinct is right. Maybe I can get grog in one cup, and then before it completely dissolves, pour it into another, and just sort of keep that going. How many grog cups do I have? I have four. I think I can... Whoop. I think I can can do that. Oh, the Samson emoji. It's been too long since Panda's been on stream. That was a good it was a good day when uh, when that went live. I actually think I have slots for a few more that I uh, that I need to uh, to fill out. I just don't know what I would use for a for a stream emoji. Oh, okay, cool. I can pick this one up. Where's this? There we go. So I am open to suggestions. Use cup. Oh, this is the original. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. In the original, it's uh, I just see it gradually dissolve in my inventory. Wait for it to get just a little worse before switching over. Okay, so use mug near death with okay, so I have to do that sooner than later. Oh, did it? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go into the next area and then switch it over. OK, 
Okay, now use that with all right. Let's just do this for safety. Buster. <laughs> but do you still have a deal? Classic pirate move. I'm sure he'll be back. He gave me his word as a pirate. I think it's welded shut now. Well, I still feel that I owe it to the um the aspiring circus performers to uh, to get them their rat back. Whatever that rat did to uh, to get thrown in jail, I'm sure it's a victim of society. I think the game itself made that joke, so maybe I'm just uh, repeating that. Instinct, did you ever play the um, the the remake of Shadowgate? That came out on PC. That was a point-and-click adventure that was quite a lot of fun and well made. Um, that on uh, there we go and uh it also um here let's get over here and then switch it over It's good. It's well made. I don't know what made me think of it, but thinking of it, I did do. All right, now what about those pirates of low moral fiber? Or men of low moral fiber, pirates. I'll just be running along now. Aw. Uh, well, at least I did a good turn by that rat. But this is a pretty good time to call it for the night. Um, got some evening chores that I need to take care of before it gets too much later. So, let's uh, see, where do we Oh, 25%. So it looks like we got a few more streams of this left in us. Um, so that's great. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Mexican Sting, Space Hamlet, and I think Peach is still here. Thank you all for coming out. And, uh, yeah, I'll be doing this again on Wednesday next week. So, thank you very much. Have a good night. Later.